So one method that allows you to check the depth of the anterior chamber is Van Herrick's technique. In order to perform Van Herrick's, the observation and illumination systems have to be separated by exactly 60 degrees and locked into place. You use a narrow beam placed exactly at the limbus and essentially you are comparing the thickness of the section of the cornea with the dark band of anterior chamber exactly adjacent to it. You ignore the iris band and you are comparing the thickness of the cornea to the thickness of the anterior chamber. For a grade four or a wide open angle, you expect the ratio to be one to one. It is easier to measure the anterior chamber angle depth using Van Herrick's temporally, but some argue it's very important to also measure it nasally as it tends to be slightly narrower nasally. The narrower the chamber is, the less likely you are to dilate the pupil. So it's important if someone's anterior chamber angle is narrow that you check it both temporally and nasally. You have to be careful of the nose when you're measuring nasally. So just always check before you swing the illumination system round that you're not going to hit the patient's nose. And again, you're locking it at 60 degrees and you're placing the beam at the lumbar. If you are aware that your patient's nose is obstructing the illumination system, you are able to ask your patient to rotate the head round while still looking straight ahead, like so. And again, placing the beam at the limbus. So in order to perform Smith's technique, the observation and illumination systems must also be separated by 60 degrees and the beam must be rotated so it is horizontal. Then what you will do is place the beam horizontally across the cornea. You start with a short beam and you will see a brighter beam which is placed on the anterior cornea, the epithelial surface, and then a duller image which is placed on the surface of the anterior crystalline lens. What you're doing is using the slit height, so you're gradually increasing the slit height until the two beams just appear to touch. At that point, you then take a reading from the graticule and you multiply the reading from the graticule by a constant correction factor of 1.4. And that will give you a quantitative measure of the anterior chamber depth.